Hey everyone, welcome to Singularity Beast 2 Build Log Part 13. This video is going to follow directly on from Part 12. At the end of Part 12, I talked you through how I set up this Bits Power Crystal link configuration between the water blocks on the motherboard. It's now time to move on to the next step. So I have now installed all three of the graphics cards and also the sound card. And you can see that I've used Bits Power Crystal Link to tube up the graphics card water blocks also. And I've used them in a parallel configuration. You can see that I've used the larger multi link fittings. So the multi link fittings are the ones that the Bits Power Crystal Link actually fits into. I actually explained all of this in the previous video. The larger multi-link have two O-rings inside of them, whereas the multi-link mini have a single O-ring inside of them. So the benefit of the larger one is that you have more leeway as to you know where the crystal link can sit inside of the multi-link fittings. And the benefit of the multi-link mini is that you can actually see more of the crystal link itself. So the reason that I almost always go for the larger multi-link fitting on graphics cards is to give more strength to the configuration. That is also one of the benefits of a parallel configuration because as you can see with this configuration there is two crystal link fittings between each graphics card water block whereas in a serial configuration there would only be one. Okay the difference between serial and parallel. In a serial configuration the entire flow of the water cooling loop goes through each of the graphics card water blocks one at a time. In this particular parallel configuration, the flow is divided and goes through all three of the graphics card water blocks at the same time, but you only get one third of the flow going through each of the graphics card water blocks. So just to give you a basic example, in a loop where there is only a few components and a powerful pump, I would go for a serial configuration. And in a loop where there is a lot of components, I would go for a parallel configuration. There is no strict rules that you really need to stick to though because what we are talking about here is something that can maximize the performance of your water cooling loop but it's not critical. Okay, as you can see I managed to use Bits Power Crystal Link to go from the motherboard chipset water block to the graphics cards but I actually changed this configuration before I fill the loop because I'm not quite happy with it it's not quite lined up. Now these two fittings had an offset of about five millimeters and I decided to try to use a 90 degree dual rotary fitting and angle it to make up for this offset. But as you can see from both sides it is on a slight angle and yeah I certainly don't like the look of it so I actually changed this. I'll show you what I end up doing later in the build log. Okay, that's about it. So the motherboard tray is now ready to go back into the case. I've tubed up all of these water blocks. So there's eight EK nickel plexi water blocks going into this system. And all of them are tubed up with Bits Power Crystal Link. So black sparkle fittings, Crystal Link, and EK nickel plexi water blocks. I really don't think you can get a better combination. Okay, it's now time for me to start removing the rest of the hardware from the case. I need to still drain the rest of this loop, dust clean everything, remove the radiators and flush them, remove the tangled mess of wiring, all of the case fans. There is a lot of work to do on this case before I can start installing hardware again. Okay, it's now time for the BitsPower Dual Slash Single D5 Top Upgrade Kit 150. So I'm just about to install it onto my BitsPower Dual Acetyl D5 Pump Top. I'm running two MCP655s with BitsPower Mod Kits. And I also have UN Pump Mounts, but I'm not sure if I'm going to use the UN Pump Mounts or the mounts that actually come with the upgrade kit 150 because these are a really nice clean looking mount they'll suit the build really well they have a good aesthetic they're a nice sturdy mount they also come with these to prevent vibration which would also be good because I am installing them onto fans but I'm not sure if they will fit 
that's the good thing about these UN mounts, they allow for a bit of twist, you know, you can rotate them that way and also that way as you can see. So basically this is going to fit straight onto there like that. Now, the reason that there's two openings here is for the single version of this pump top. With the single version there's an inlet and an outlet on the front. And there's also multiple inlets and outlets that you can use around the pump top. With the Jewel, there's only an inlet to worry about, so you basically just forget about this other little opening here, and you're just going to be using this inlet. Okay, there we go. I've finished installing it. So that is how it works. You can see I've dismounted the reservoir straight onto the pump top there using the special base because that's basically the only difference with this upgrade kit 150 the normal bits power reservoir just comes with a different base now always make sure all of these components are screwed together properly so make sure the top is screwed on nice and tight as well as the base and I can tell you acetyl is quite a soft material so you need to be so careful when you're doing up these bolts. These are little M3 Allen key bolts and you just have to be be so careful with those threads because they, they are going to strip very very easy. I could feel when I was doing them up that they have a very very soft thread so be careful there. Also be careful with these threads. These are M4 threads so they're a little bit bigger and stronger but you still need to be extremely careful so I removed the UN mounts and I've installed the mounts that came with the upgrade kit 150. You can see them there so it all just matches up nicely and it looks great you know the aesthetics are so much cleaner and so much better than they were before with all of the separate fittings. Not only that this configuration also potentially slightly increases flow because there is less fittings and tubing for the coolant to travel through. It just goes straight into one side of the pump top and out the other and the reservoir actually just acts as a filler now because it only has one hole in the bottom of it. So it basically just drops the coolant straight down into the pump top and it's no longer part of the flow of the water cooling loop. Now because of the way I'm going to have this configured this piece of plexi is going to be facing the front of the build and it's actually for LEDs. I would use it and install LEDs if it was more hidden but I'm actually going to remove it just to clean up the aesthetics even more. Okay, the plexi is removed and it certainly does look a lot cleaner. I am really happy with the results of this upgrade kit. I'm really impressed with it. This is such a compact and clean assembly. The, you know, everything matches up. You have the black acetyl pump top, matte black mod kits on the pumps. The mounts are black, the top and bottom of the reservoir is black, and then you have the clear reservoir and also the clear front piece of the dual pump top through which you can see the coolant flowing. I think this configuration looks amazing. Now there is also another version of this upgrade kit. There's also the different sizes, but there is actually a clear plexi version of the upgrade kit that comes with a clear base. And this is for the clear versions of the pump top. Now you can see that the reservoir is actually taking up one of the inlets on the dual pump top. So there is now only a single inlet that you can use. You can see that there is two outlets that you can use. So a little bit restricted with the inlets but there is always a way of working with these things in your build. Okay I decided to sleeve the wiring for the pumps. I used PET black sleeving and heat shrink. So it was just a quick job. It's certainly not the best job. This is all going to be out of sight anyway. You can see that there's a bit of bleed through from the yellow wiring, but it actually looks pretty good. I used more heat shrink than I needed to just to give it some more strength because I pull apart my builds and change them a lot. I don't want the sleeving to start falling apart next time I pull my system apart. But there it is. Now it's actually time to 
install this configuration into the build. Okay, it's actually been nearly half a day now since I last filmed and in that time I have removed everything from the case including all of the case panels. I have dust cleaned everything and I have flushed out all of the water cooling components including the radiators. Now the way I flushed out the radiators I just fill them with tap water and the best thing to do is not so much shake them but turn them upside down let all of the water flow to one side turn them around the other way let all of the water flow back do this a number of times empty the radiator fill it again do the same thing and I probably do this nearly 10 times per radiator I know this is not the most elegant way of doing things but it is very effective my radiators were very clean I only had a few small bits and pieces come out of them so everything is clean and I've started installing components back into the case. Now I've changed around some of the configuration of the case thanks to this case's modular design. I've blanked off almost all of the 5.25 inch bays on this side of the case. I've just left one open at the top which will be for the Aquero. Now the reason I've done this is because I'm changing around the airflow design of the case and I'm also planning on installing some hot swap hard drive bays into the 5.25 inch bays. But I'll talk more about this later in the build log. So you can see that I've installed one of the 480 millimeter radiators onto this side. I've also installed the dual pump and reservoir configuration. I actually had to change around the mounts. I ended up using the UN pump mounts. So I just have that mounted straight onto the fans again. I've installed the Noctua NFF12s onto the this radiator as well as the fan grills and dust filters. I have also removed one of the power supplies so I just have a single AX1200 installed. Okay, looking at the front of the case on the other side, I've blanked off the top two bays before I had them all open. I'm just going to install the quad hard drive cage into one of the bottom open bays and a case fan into the other bottom open bay. Soon I'm going to be moving all of my hard drives over into the hot swap bays anyway, so this is just temporary. Okay, if you hadn't already gathered, I'm using Noctua NFF12s right through this build as case fans and also as radiator fans. So I've installed two onto the floor in the middle on this side and I've blanked off the outer two openings on the floor because this case is designed for four 480 millimeter radiators, one on the roof, one on the floor on either side. If you are interested in the case, make sure you check out my review. I'll put a link on the screen. As you can see, it allows for a lot of customization. It might look like a simple case on the outside because of its elegant and simplistic aesthetics, but a lot have, of thought has gone into this case, and it is specifically designed for high-end hardware and water cooling. Okay, so I'll talk more about the airflow design that I'm going for later in the build log, but I can tell you that I'm going for a positive pressure airflow design, which is what I try to do in all of my builds because it is a very simple way of preventing dust. Okay, looking around the back of the build, you can see what I've done with the power supplies. I've just blanked off the top mounting area and I've mounted a single AX1200 at the bottom. I'm soon going to be replacing this with the Corsair AX1200i. So that's another addition that I'm going to be making to this build. So this time I've used the power supply reinforcement panel. Now you can see there's approximately a 30mm gap between the power supply and the reinforcement panel for airflow. And without the reinforcement panel there's about a 50mm gap between the power supply and the motherboard tray. So potentially the power supply reinforcement panel could restrict airflow, but I don't think it's going to be enough to actually make a difference. There's plenty of ways to get around this though. You can turn the power supply around the other way like I have. Then you actually run into the same 30 millimeter gap on the other side between the power supply and the side panel. But you can get around this because you can actually purchase ventilated side panels for this case. 
Okay, as you can see, I have started on the cable management. So these are the front panel connectors and I was actually planning to pull these apart and sleeve all of them. But then I remembered that they are marked with these little pieces of tape and I would have to find some way of marking them after I sleeve them. So I just thought they weren't actually long enough anyway. Basically, before when I had them directly connected to the motherboard, I had to run them in such a way that was messy and they were in sight because the cables aren't long enough to run them out of sight. So, I thought I'd just go with Bitfenix Alchemy Black Extension Cables. I'm going to be using them around the build for other things anyway. So, just taking a look again at the wiring that I sleeved for the pumps. So, these are the two 3-pin sensor cables to read off the pump RPMs and also the two Molex connectors. Okay, before I go any further, I just thought I'd show you how I mounted this dual pump and reservoir configuration. So, I'm really happy with the way that this has turned out. It just looks so incredibly clean compared to before. Not only that, before I kind of had the reservoir mounted to a fitting and it really should have been mounted to the case because it was just kind of sitting there and it could easily move side to side but now it is all strong and sturdy bolted together it's not going anywhere you know even if I lay the case on its side it's all going to stay nicely in position so what I've done as I said I had to swap to the UN pump mounts so those are the vertical UN pump mounts Below those I have Z2 mounts, so those are the ones that go mount onto the fans. They're a 120mm mount. I then fitted ModSmart black 120mm fan grills underneath that because I really wanted to still protect those fans. And the grills are also for aesthetics because they kind of add a little bit of black, you know, over the color of the Noctua fans and they blend them in a little bit. Then underneath that is the Noctua NFF12s and then the 480mm radiator which is obviously mounted to the case. Now the bolts that go through the Z2 mounts, the ModSmart black fan grills and the Noctua NFF12s into the 480mm radiator are 35mm M4 button head Allen key bolts and they're the perfect length to go straight through all of those components. I've mounted the UN vertical pump mounts directly to the Z2 mounts and there was only just enough room underneath the pumps to be able to do that. I think there's less than a 5mm gap under there and I could only just get the wiring out underneath. I was really lucky to have those ModSmart fan grills in there because otherwise the wiring would have gone straight into the fan blades. and. I've mounted the dual pump top, the bits power dual pump top straight to the UN vertical pump mounts just with M4 button head allen key bolts. Now the tubing routing surrounding this configuration is going to be a little bit more difficult than before due to the fact that I have one less inlet and the pump top has been rotated 90 degrees. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to have a tube coming in on an angle from underneath the graphics cards going to the inlet which is around the back of the config and I'm going to have to use a couple of fittings there to get the angle that I need basically if you have difficult difficult angles it just means you need to use more fittings on the other side I already have a dual rotary 90 degree installed and I'm probably going to need to use another one to get the angle that I need down to the 480 millimeter radiator Okay, due to popular request, I've decided to show a bit of the process of the cable management. Now, all of the cable management in this build is actually temporary, so I'm not putting a whole lot of effort into it because I know that within a month I'm going to be redoing it. Now, I've had a lot of people asking me to do a wiring guide to show me wiring up my builds. Now, I definitely plan on doing a wiring guide. I might do a separate video but I will definitely integrate it into my upcoming water cooling guide. So when you are doing your wiring, I see a lot of people, they just grab a big bundle and try to tie it up neatly. Now 
it's not going to work. You need to start with a single wire, a single strand. And you need to add more strands to that, more wires, one at a time. So you add a second wire and a third wire. And as you add each wire, you need to be looking to make sure that they are not twisted around each other, they're not tangled. Keep them clean all the way until you have your bundle, then tie it up. Take your time. Always take your time with your wiring. If you rush it, it's going to end up messy. Take a route with your wiring that's going to be completely out of sight from the front of the build. Okay, if you have excess wiring that needs to be bundled up, don't bundle it all in the same place. You can see with what I've done here, I actually have a lot of excess wiring length and I certainly haven't bundled it in one place. I've bundled them one at a time, maybe two at a time, separately to keep the same thickness all the way down the back of the case. Also take a route where you can actually tie the wiring. So where there's, you know, the clips on the back of the case and take a route that is going to use up some of the extra length that you have, if you have extra length. There's a lot of things that you need to consider and because of this, you need to really plan it out. So don't plan out the entire, you know, your entire cable management before you do it. Just plan out each section before you get started. Something else that's extremely important when doing your wiring, don't be afraid to redo things as many times as it takes to get it perfect. I always redo things, sometimes up to five times when I'm doing my wiring. Because of this, I will go through so many cable ties. I might tie up a section with 20 cable ties, go back and cut them all off and do it again. And the main reason that you need to redo things is because wiring is something that develops. You continue adding more and more wiring as you go. And yeah, because of this, you need to constantly change. You will see better ways of doing things. Often you start tying something up and then you think, no, there's, there's a better, a cleaner way of doing things. Consider that every time you redo it, it is more practice and you are getting better and better at it. I think most people would think of cable management as a small part of a build and an easy part of a build, but that is certainly not the case. It's actually really the most time consuming part of a build, even a build like this. And there is nothing easy about it. So hopefully these tips are enough to get you started. Okay, at this point in time, I am approximately 26 hours into the build. I have done two 12 hour days and I'm two hours into day three. As you can see, I have installed the motherboard tray back into the case. I've installed all three of the 480 millimeter radiators, as well as all of the fans, grills, and dust filters. So I dust cleaned all of the radiator fins and also flushed out the radiators. I've also started installing the fittings ready to start tubing up. And I've installed a drainage system on the lower 480 millimeter radiator. So I've also installed the power supply, the dual pump and reservoir configuration, the Aquero. I have wired up all of the radiator fans, but they're actually not quite right. I'm going to have to go back in and change around that configuration a little bit. I've also started wiring up, but there is a lot more still to be done. I've done the 24 pin motherboard power and the front panel connectors. The next step now is to finish the wiring, tube up, and then I can fill the water cooling loop. But that's about it for this part of the build log. There's some important topics that I have actually missed that I would really like to cover, so I'm going to do that in the next few videos. I also need to take a close look at some of the components, so for example the Noctua NFF12s and the Aquero. That sums up this video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, like and favorite if you want to see more.